In this video, I'm going to talk about my experience owning the Honda Elite scooter. I will talk about repair and maintenance and basically what it's like to live with it. I'm not going to bore you with details and specifications which are plentiful online but not too many people can actually say how it held up over a period of time. <clears throat> I've had it for two years, a few weeks over two years and it now has 16,600 miles on it. I've bought it in Tennessee and I've ridden it cross country to Los Angeles. And most of the miles are put on during my um, highway trips, camping trips all over California, Nevada, some into Arizona. So I would say 70% of the miles were done going the highway speed. It currently tops out at 50 miles per hour. Downhill it could go 53, but on average I cruise at around 45, 40, and it will slow down to 15. 20 miles per hour going up steep grades when fully loaded. For example, going uh, up in Death Valley or Yosemite, there's plenty of steep hills in California. And it will slow down, and wide open throttle will not allow it to move faster than 20 miles an hour. As far as maintenance, I have replaced engine oil approximately every 1500 to 2000 miles. I've gone as long as 2500 and as little as 1200. I use synthetic oil which is a mixture 50-50% mix of uh, Valvoline motorcycle 20W50 oil, full synthetic motorcycle oil, and the other 50% is Walmart's 10W30 Super Tech full synthetic car oil. This gives the final viscosity of about 1540, which turns out to to be just about right for a wide variety of conditions from the very hot summer riding in the desert to uh, 35 degrees starts early in the morning out in the in the winter where the oil is still fluid enough the front tire is original at 16 and a half this is what it looks like it's about ready to, to be replaced but it has never had any problems never had a flat and I already have a, a spare so I'm going to put it on uh, probably in the nearest future. I have never replaced brake pads yet. And inspection showed that they are at around 50% mark right now. <clears throat> I have replaced the brake fluid twice. First time pretty much right after purchasing it at 2000 miles. And most recently uh, last weekend when I did a major maintenance to it. The brake reservoir is behind this shield. There's a level mark. I don't know if it can be seen. 
And what I mostly have done is I just let it drain on its own using uh, basically what's called gravity bleeding. I open the re reservoir and then I open the this drain screw and I just let it drain without allowing the reservoir to run dry. This <clears throat> prevents air from entering the system and easily replaces the fluid in you know, five minutes. There's not much of it in there. As far as rear brakes, again, I've never had to replace the rear brake pads. They are probably at 85 to 90 percent life left on them. I guess I don't use brakes that much. Uh, when you're riding out in the open desert, you can just let off the gas to come to the stop sign and this saves the brake linings. Uh, the air filter hides behind this box. Um, I have replaced it twice already. <coughs> First time at approximately 6,000, second time uh, around 14,000. And it is a kind of expensive filter. <coughs> if you buy them online from a Honda store, it's about $30. I bought one in Barcelona, Spain, uh, when I was there for vacation for $10 equivalent in euros but that filter was poor quality Chinese made it didn't seal well so after after a little bit of riding I noticed that it let some dust pass the filter into the housing and I just decided to use the genuine Honda filter which is way 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 better made <coughs> I've replaced the coolant twice. The first time also shortly after purchasing and the second time a week ago. This is the uh, radiator cover and to replace the coolant uh, you will take the these four bolts off, three bolts right here, eight millimeters, uh, undo the plastic drain plug Obviously, open the radiator cover cap and let the fluid drain. Here is the little window that shows the level of your coolant. I am going to take the window out to let you see the reservoir but the level should be visible as it is. This is the little dust cover and there it is. I overfilled it slightly but it doesn't matter. Okay, the scooter holds very very tiny amount of coolant at around 0.6 of a, of a quart. <coughs> I've used the mixture of 50-50 um, mix of Preston regular automotive green coolant mixed with uh, distilled water and that should should be good for two years it never dripped it never evaporated it, it always stayed at the same level I mounted this self-made rack for a little extra visibility at night <coughs> valve adjustment on this bike is very easy and straightforward relatively speaking of course basically all one needs to do is remove this plastic seat insert 
it's just uh, half a dozen of, of bolts here 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 and there's two down underneath there you just lift the thing out and you get easy access to the engine uh, the first time I checked the valve clearance was at 2,000 miles and it seemed like the exhaust was slightly on the tight side so I've adjusted it <coughs> and the second time I've checked it last weekend and all valves were in spec absolutely spot on <coughs> It is also actually very easy to set the, the bike in the top dead center because there is a mark right here behind the, it's probably hard to see right now, but behind the this fan, well once you remove this cover it will be very easy to see the marks on the crankshaft there. <coughs> The spark plugs, spark plug, one of them, uh, is also easy to access. You pretty much, um, yeah, I believe you can actually access it without removing the seat. But here's the access cover. I usually change it right when I take the seat out because it would be probably easier. Uh, it's an NGK spark plug. Uh, according to the manual, it can last or it needs to be replaced every 5,000 miles. The plug is $6 on Amazon. I use the hotter range plug, also specified by Honda. There's two of them. And I use the one that's uh, meant for extended highway driving. And never had a single problem with a spark plug. Actually, I've never really had a single problem with anything as far as unforeseen repairs, damages, except perhaps <laughs> the drive belt, but it was completely my fault. So at 13,000 miles, when I was in Death Valley, the belt snapped. And I had a spare one, and I knew the old one was way beyond its useful life because it was cracked. It had plenty of small, a lot of small cracks all around the belt. And I think that is not from the mileage. At 13k, it still was within spec as far as the width of it. Um, I've measured it, but it was just dry rotten. It was old. It was probably, well, it was installed when the scooter was assembled built in 2009 and just due to age it just probably dried up yeah this, this bike was built in November 2009 so since this happened in 2014 it was <coughs> at least five years old being installed on the bike and could have been even older if it was laying around in the factory somewhere <coughs> so I've replaced the belt which um, is around thirty dollars you can buy them online easily and it's pretty easy to replace it you do have to have a small tool to hold the sprocket uh, but if you are at home and you can use the impact wrench or some other ingenious way of holding the sprocket you can get away with just using hand tools that's how I've changed my first one right now I have a I bought a tool to make it easier um, <coughs> what else I've never had to change the ro uh, rollers yet they are still within spec they are round and Apparently they're going to last way beyond 20,000 miles. I do have a spare set I purchased just in case. Uh, rear tire. This is the third tire which I installed once again very recently, 
two weeks ago. And this is uh, Pirelli SL26, uh, the standard size, which is 90, 100, radius of 10 inches. You can buy this uh, on Amazon for uh, $30, basically, a little over $30. The first one that I've used lasted me approximately 8,000 miles. And the stock tire also lasted 8,000 miles. And I did replace when both of them were pretty bold. Uh, there are plenty of tires available online. And I'm thinking maybe I'll try Michelin S1 next time, if I'll still have the scooter. And some people are using little oversized tires. Uh, they supposedly will fit and increase the speed a little bit, but I just like sticking with the original equipment and I, I, I didn't really feel the need to go faster and deal with the potential clearance uh, difficulties. Um, so, bottom line, overall, the scooter has been really reliable, it did not have any, any problems, any unforeseen, unexpected repairs, and I'm quite, quite pleased with it, I really enjoyed riding it, and it is hard to find a better combination of storage, uh, how nimble and small it is, how inexpensive it is to maintain, and how good of a gas mileage it gets, because it does get uh, anywhere between 90 and 108 miles per gallon. I'm probably averaging around 95 in mixed riding. And ironically, I noticed that it uses uh, less gas if I'm going in the mountains, up, up and down hill, mostly uphill at low RPM. Um, this is my first aid kit I carry pretty much all the time. Never had any problems with electrics. Lights work really well. Uh, this is the automotive size H4 light bulb. That's 55 watt low beam and 60 watt high beam so it illuminates the road really well at night and I really enjoy riding it at night out in the deserts because I can see well and I don't have to worry about cars <coughs> the oil level stays pretty much the same for 1500 miles. If I'm riding a lot of highway miles, it can burn a tiny bit. That is why I carry a spare bottle of oil. That I've used from a, this little vodka bottle. And I also carry a full tire repair kit on my trips, just in case I have to repair it. I have um, obviously different locks, just parking in the city, you never know, somebody might be tempted to take it. It's only 250-260 pounds, so two people could fairly easily move it pretty much anywhere, load into the back of the truck. Uh, it's really nice that there is a temperature gauge on it. It helps you to monitor how your engine is doing. And most of the time the gauge stays at one quarter past cold, but I have seen it go as high as past three quarters and that was during the run across the 
desert between Phoenix and Parker, Arizona at 115 degrees with a passenger <laughs> at wide open throttle. Uh, it really was a good test for the cooling system. Uh, but it never did overheat and uh, most of the time it just stays there. It's nice to have a fuel gauge also. I really don't like the idea of guessing how much gas you have in the tank when riding bikes like Honda Rockers and other ones that don't have a fuel gauge. I think it's a real hassle to to rely on, on, on guessing or measuring the distance. This is the 1.5 liter spare gas can that I carry with me when I go and it's been useful quite a few times it's not as big as a, a gallon can that some people carry but I think it's really sufficient it'll allow me to go another 50 miles or so and that's usually plenty to make it to the next town, next gas station. Um, it's made out of metal, so I don't have to worry about it bursting open during the elevation changes. Uh, that is what was happening with the plastic one gallon tank that I had. You'll go up the mountains and it will shrink and almost deform and you'll come down the mountains, it will be like a bubble ready to burst. This thing, when you fill it to about this line, it leaves enough air there, right here, maximum filling line. It will leave enough air there to compress and uh, prevent any kind of leaking or bursting. The other maintenance item on the scooter is, of course, the final drive oil. And you have a fill plug here and drain bolt right here. Both are, I believe, 10 millimeter bolts. And it holds 0 .1, 0 0.12 of a liter, which is 120 milliliters, well, one tenth of a quart basically, tiny amount of gear oil. And I use a regular 75W90 gear fluid. And I replace it approximately once every 5,000 miles. Uh, one thing I discovered in the beginning when I first replaced it was that if I, when I reused this washer, this aluminum crush washer, it actually was leaking and did not seal properly. So I had to buy the washer at a local store, they are very cheap, and reinstall the bolt. And then of course leak and stop. But it is something to keep in mind, apparently. So now every time I change it, I, I will install a new washer. Uh, or if you have time you can of course check see if it's leaking with the old washer and if it is uh, maybe retinite in it or just installed a new one the one unfortunate thing about this scooter is that it does not have a kick starter and using the electric starter is the only way to really start the engine so, if your battery dies and you're somewhere out in the middle of nowhere, somewhere in the mountains, 20 miles from the nearest highway, uh, it's problematic. So, at the very least, I'm always carrying this jumper cable. Uh, but I've been thinking of some other solution to, to the potential no start issue if I'm far away from from the road 
to install the battery uh, you just remove this shield there is around five five screws all around including this main screw and the battery is right behind the shield the forks and the shocks up front are hydraulic and they do have a spring inside I have never replaced fork oil in them yet and I've heard it will improve your ride a bit and it's probably a good idea to do but I haven't noticed any deterioration and damping the ride quality so I haven't bothered uh, changing the, the fluid yet the rear shock is hydraulic it's a single shock and it is stiff enough for two passengers obviously so it serves me really well when I load the bike with gear and it just becomes much smoother than if I'm riding alone in the city I am really really um, glad that the bike has the rack because it really is convenient to load the camping gear on the back of the rack and there are plenty of spaces to tie the bungee cords behind so I carry my tent, my pad uh, sleeping bag all on the rack and I don't feel the need to have a, uh, a case luggage case just because uh, I can carry a lot more just in the back here the floorboard in the front serves really well as well uh, this is where I put a backpack and another bag hanging around the handlebars and it adds to the way the scooter is loaded handles better and this is something that a lot of other bikes obviously can't offer and it would be a big compromise to go to another bike if I have to lose that, that carrying space um, as you can see there's a lot of room here um, I've taken this bike to the airport and I put a pretty big suitcase here um, so it can carry some luggage the LAX airport allows uh, bike parking for 30 days uh, for free so it's quite a convenient way of flying out if I don't have to worry and pay for, for parking and this about concludes this review I have to say that the bike has been extremely reliable it runs well, it's very smooth I really love the engine, I love the combination of uh, luggage space, cargo space that it offers, as well as its uh, flexibility and maneuverability. Um, at 16,000 the bike is definitely, has definitely not even reached half of its potential useful life because there are people out there online who have put 45 and I've seen 47 thousand miles on these bikes and I wouldn't be surprised if uh, the engine uh, would be able to go far beyond there is one guy online who plans to keep it 200,000 miles So, it is very easy to, to maintain, to repair, I've never had to take it to any dealer, to any shop and I think most people with basic skills can do the same and th this means that it's not just fun uh, transportation for entertainment, for 
weekend rides. Uh, but it uh, offers pretty compelling argument to keep it as a you know, primary commuting uh, bike for those who live in maybe a smaller town or city where one doesn't need to go beyond 40-45 miles per hour or um, doesn't need to go too far. If any specific questions about maintenance, repair, parts, uh, feel free to post a question down in the, in the comment section and I would be glad to, to try to answer or to point uh, you out into a direction of that information. Thank you.